Good morning and welcome to the Absa Bank Business Series here on Facebook Live. My name is Ebenezer Amankwa. I work with Absa Bank. I'm actually in charge of corporate communications and external relations at Absa Bank. At Absa Bank, we believe in bringing possibilities to life for our customers, our stakeholders, and our clients. It's very important for us. As a bank, I think that's what we live for, to ensure that our customers are happy and excited to bank with us all along the journey. That's what a bank stands for. And APSA, we do just that in this country. Now, I love brands. I mean, that's what I do. I really can talk about brands all day. Brands are everywhere around us. I like the power brands have, the power they wield and what they stand for. You can look uh, across uh, the, the entire spectrum of this world. Brands are staring out at us every time of day. In fact, the shirt I'm wearing today is a brand. There's a reason why I'm buying this shirt and I bought this shirt and not another shirt. There's a reason why I'm wearing perhaps my trousers and not any other trousers. My shoes, uh, not so much, but uh, my watch maybe. Uh, there's a reason why I bought this particular one. So it's really about how brands connect with people. Humanity was made for relationships and connections, and brands are able to help us bring them to life. That's the essence of brand. So today our topic, I think, is very important for entrepreneurs, for small businesses, for big organizations. How do you stand out in the midst of the complexities of this world? We now uh, say that we are living in a post-pandemic world. We used to be in a pandemic world and a pre-pandemic world. The world has changed altogether as we know it, right before our very eyes. How do businesses navigate the complexities? How do you win with your brand? How do you position it such that people and your customers can continue to be loyal and to continue to patronize and continue to buy from you and nobody else? That really perhaps is the key question facing most marketers today. How do you continue to stay relevant despite the changing dynamics of the world? And that's where we come in with this topic. It's important and I think that it will help us all to understand what we should do. Now, the fundamental task of any business anywhere in this world is to create and keep a customer consistently. That remains the fundamental task of every business. The world might have changed we now live in a, a, the age of digitization, the age of technology. Customer needs are changing continuously, yes. But the universal truth of creating and keeping a customer has never changed. It will remain the same. The expression of that creating and keeping a customer process might have changed the expression. But the universal truth is still strong. Because what you are in a business for is that you want somebody to believe in your philosophy of what you want to sell you have identified a problem that you want to solve now you have identified a problem for a particular individual or a particular person for the person to believe that for the problem that they have critically you can solve that that is the relationship you have in terms of how you deliver your offering and your product to any customer under the sun under any circumstance and for me it's at the core of every business activity. So brand building, the brand building activity then becomes the central point of every marketing process for any business. How you are able to project your brand. What product do you want to sell? What have you identified? What are you selling? How have you packaged it? What channels are you using? What platforms are you positioning your products for the customer to see? Have you identified a particular customer you are targeting? Or are you targeting everybody? And if you're targeting them, how are you targeting them? What age group are you even targeting? What is their income level? All these things, the process of the brand activity really is at the core of the marketing process for any business. And once you get it right, once you get it right, it becomes a continuous process of constantly engaging and constantly positioning your brand in a way that becomes powerful. Because brands are powerful. When brands are powerful, Brands are able to command, they are able to lead, they are able to have a voice, they are able to speak. You know, brands are, are personalized in my estimation. A brand speaks. Absa Bank, we say we believe in bringing possibilities to life. We speak to that because we believe that 
what we have as a platform is able to give our customer confidence and convenience in how to navigate their financial problems and to win at all costs. I mean, look at it. Absa Bank is only two years old in Ghana, but we have a, an over a century year heritage in this country from our erstwhile backlist brand. We are only two years, but look at our heritage, over 105 years of consistently proving to the Ghanaian customer that we care and we are the solution for their problems. Last year, Absa Bank became the only bank, hmm, the only bank in the history of Ghana's uh, financial services to cross the 1 billion Ghana CD mark in terms of profitability for a bank that is only two years old. But you see the power of the brand? It, it, it emanates from that erstwhile over a century backlist heritage. The customers believe that over a hundred years, this bank has consistently given me what I want in terms of my financial solutions. And so I stick with it. So the customers have now given us the power. APSA Bank's power in this country is derived from the people that we serve. And that's what consistently brands must realize, that you are not in the business of being true to your own self. Yes, you should be, but the most important point is that a customer is an essential part of how you are able to gain prominence. So the aim of the marketing activity really is to bestow differentiation. We are different from any other bank and, and, and brands must be different from any other individual. That's how you stand out. Brands are powerful. In the 90s, in the early 90s, um, Ghana as a, a country has that image of being a football-led country. When you mentioned Ghana, everybody would connect you to football. Why? Because we had a brand of football that was winning across the continent, across the world, on all sh major football competitions and show pieces, and were delivering excellently. I was in Egypt in 2006 uh, for the African Nations Cup. And when I got there, I told the Egyptians I was from Ghana. Two things they said. Two things they said. One, Kwame Nkrumah because of the Fatia connection. Two, Abidi Pele. This, for me, essentially stood out as how they are able to connect the country to the perception of what we stand for. That's a brand. Brands are there because brands project something in the minds of the prospective customer or the prospective patronizer. And that is what it enhances the weight, the equity, and the power of the brand consistently. I mean, look, at, look, look, look around us. We have cars of every kind. There are, it's a reason why people navigate towards a particular brand of car. It's, I mean, you looking, I mean, watching me right now today on your screens, there's a, there's a reason why you're perhaps patronizing a particular set of computer hardware or, or software and not the other. It is the brand, it's the connection. In the 60s, the yearning for independence, the, the, the slogan, the self-government now became an idea people were rallying behind. That was a brand. The issue of the age today is that we are living in a post-pandemic world. The issue is how are brands able to embrace all this and still remain relevant? The digital age is all over around us. Now brands, your, your customers have navigated and told you where they are. They are on, on digital. They are speaking there. Brands are being dragged to the digital age. You didn't ask to go there. But because your customers are going there, you're going there. That is the dynamism that we are experiencing in our current age. And we as marketers, as businesses, as small-scale businesses, you could be in, in a market, you could be in your shop, you could be a startup business, you could be an organization. It's the constancy of always asking the strong questions. How do I connect with my customers? How do I understand them, speak like them, relate like them so that I can give them what they want at the point of their need. So the brand building process considers three stages. The first stage is segmentation. For every brand to be effective, you need to segment the market. Know, you know the segment descriptors, the, the, the demographics. What are you really looking at here in Ghana if I want to be relevant in a particular product or activity? What am I looking at here? How do I segment the market? My insights, how do I understand the age groups, where people are playing, where people are converging, what age group might potentially buy into my idea? And how do I connect so that I can segment them out of the market? Once you are able to do that excellently, then you move on to targeting. 
that is where you are able to choose the relevant customer class that is important to your product offering, what you want to deliver. It's all part of the process. The process begins from segmentation, it moves to targeting. It's very important why you get to targeting because then you're able to zoom in to a particular class set to say this is what I want to target. After that, they will move into what we are talking about today, positioning. How then do I argue out my point of difference? How do I speak? How do I relate? How do I project what I want to deliver to this customer to the point that they would immediately see it and quickly rally towards my brand? Very, very, very important. So that's how do you win the positioning battle? That's the essential point of what we're talking about. Brands speak and positioning is that angle, that platform by which they are able to speak. But we get ahead of ourselves because we are talking about positioning, but then we have, have, having had time to sit down to analyze what a brand is. And I think that essentially today, a brand in its simplest definition <laughs> format, it is what the customer says it is. I repeat that again. A brand is what a customer says it is, not what the brand thinks it is. The brand process, how you develop insights and deliver the idea is one thing, but the relevance and the perception of your brand is what the customer says you are. I have a, I have a, men, a mentor, Afari Apiedu Donko, who says in the typical Ekwapim language that enkase wuye, mawonkase wuye. That is the point. It is not what you think you are. It is what people say you are. So it is important for brands, for marketers, for businesses to understand what are our customers saying. That is why businesses must learn to always be in touch with their customers. Close contact, close connection. Understand the new things that are happening. What they are thinking about. What are their challenges? What are their problems? How can we continue to stand and be dynamic and so that we can meet them at a the point of their need all the time? A brand is also a vehicle of mobilization onto a powerful idea. Wherever there's a brand, there's a powerful idea. Absa, we bring possibilities to life. That's a powerful idea of ensuring that at every touch point of the customer, financially, digitally, we are there. That's why Absa today is so strong on SMEs. We are focused on SMEs because we believe that they are the engine of growth for this country. And we have to position ourselves to stand as the gap that supports them to meet their needs, that supports them to contribute to Ghana's socioeconomic growth. Very, very important strategy. The other one is being a digitally led bank. We are in a post-pandemic era where almost everybody is gravitating towards digital technology. We, 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 the, the, the workplace has changed considerably than we've ever known it. The marketplace has also changed considerably than we've ever known it. Things are changing. And in the post-pandemic world, a bank has to be digitally powerful because that's where customers are, are, are asking for. Customers want convenience, ease of banking, moving from branchless banking to bankless <laughs> banking, moving from a place where you move directly physically, but you can sit by your desk and deliver solutions. That is where we are going. And so it's important that a brand is able to stand as a vehicle of mobilization towards a powerful idea. And a customer's perception of the brand is what stays, not the brand's perception of itself. Brands speak, they have an opinion. We as businesses must be able to humanize and personalize our brand. In most cases, people are, 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 are in one way or the other complaining about how some brands relate to their customers. Some people, you know, when you do researches across industries, you realize some people say their brands speak above them. They, they, they are here and their brands are speaking above them, so they are unable to connect. No, a brand must have a human voice because the human nature was made for connections. And if you are in a business to stay for the long term, consistency is very, very important. So we come to positioning. How do we embrace all that to position our brand in a way that is relevant? Positioning really is not what you do to the brand. It is what you do to the mind of the prospective buyer. Positioning is not what you do to your product. So your product and how you package it, how you place it, how you channel it, 
how you sell. It's great, all well and good. Even your, your company, the signages, where, 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 where your logo is, where you know, your office is, the, the ambiance that you create in your office and all that, well and good. But to position your brand properly so that you stay in a business for a long term, it is what you do to the mind of the prospective buyer. If you say you are you bake and your, 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 your product from your bakery gives me a refreshing lifestyle, then when I taste or when I sink my teeth into your, your product, I should feel that refreshing lifestyle. Once I feel that, your brand essence then becomes my mantra. I communicate with that essence. And once I speak about you, I become your ambassador. And people will hear me and be moved to want to come and also take part in what you're doing. People will hear my message and I will rally a, a circle of believers onto your brand. So branding is such that beyond the... the the the, the 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 niceties beyond the the, the glitz be, beyond the quasit we should make sure that what we are offering is true and it is able to create a connection with the customer otherwise we will be here and our customers will be somewhere else so it's a dialogue not a monologue it's a dialogue not a monologue i speak and I want to understand what my customers are saying so that I can become effective and efficient in being dynamic to continuously reinvent the media. And it's very, very important. Again, marketers and businesses, don't get stuck at your desk and believe that what you are doing is important and it will work by some magic formula. No. Get onto the floor there. Go to the marketplace. Gravitate towards where your customers are. Speak and engage them. And understand what they are saying and, and change today the social uh, platform is awash with customers of all kinds we have gravitated so social as a way of espousing our views about how we interact with our brands brands must be there you must be on social a brand today that wants to be relevant for the long term must be on social engaging and listening to what the customers are saying speaking like the customers responding like the customers engaging like the customer that is how you create affinity with the customer now as we say as i've said earlier the new age continues to define the way our, uh, we live as, as 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 individuals as customers and as businesses brands must constantly ask for feedback brands must constantly listen it's very important that we listen most brands don't listen today when customers speak they are not even there to hear them and so they are unable to listen, take feedback, and respond appropriately. They don't even listen. Brands must be savvy. Today, there are several digital analytical tools all around us that we can tap into to be able to connect where our customers are so we can listen. Listening is very, very important. That's why we have two ears. It's essential that you listen, and you listen well, so you can take feedback and respond appropriately also engage in the conversation find out what they are talking about and be a part of it join them because you are in this together they are the reason why you are in business without them you have no business and so you have to constantly engage in a post pandemic world brands are in uncharted territory everybody knows that brands are, are, are it's a complex world and brands are still you know trying to make sense of the fog trying to make sense of the dark, how you can group effectively and reach a destination where you can see clarity, where you can see light at the end of the tunnel and respond appropriately. Now, only the smartest, only the fittest and the most expedient companies are winning. All too soon, the big brands that you knew before who were unwilling to listen or to be dynamic and to respond to the customer's concerns are dying. And there are so many examples we can give if we have time. But that's the point. If you don't respond appropriately, if you don't transform and reinvent, you are on the verge of decline. And brands must take that as a very essential part of how we engage our customers. So positioning your brand in this era is a very, very hard, complex and continuous process it never ends it's very hard and very complex 
there's no magic potion or formula that says when you do this and that and that then you have won no it's a complex process it's, a, it's hard work because there are so many complexities now digital has even added to the layer of complications and marketers businesses entrepreneurs startups we must open our eyes to some of these things so one take your customers seriously how do you win take your customers seriously when your customers respond and speak to you when they they give you a perception about what you are delivering when they respond to a particular offering listen in the early 80s when coca-cola changed its formula because it wanted to taste like pepsi overnight there was an uproar in the streets of new york Brand, customers were crying that bring our old cook back bring that taste back to us because we we do not recognize ourselves in this new taste that you brought even if you though you think you are you want to be sweet like pepsi we like our old coke coca-cola instantly listened to the uproar on the street i mean this demonstration by customers was captured live on most of the the, the airwaves on, on 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 in new york and the brand was able to then reinvent itself and revert to the old coca-cola formula which is still today a very uh, alive and present taste for most coca-cola lovers so take your customers seriously listen to them stay in touch with your customers and clients as we've said continuously do that i mean absa has a, a unique way of doing that where even beyond our relationship managers our directors and our business uh, um, directors and senior managers visiting and staying in touch with their clients our chief executive officer our, our md abna has this uh, 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 routine that is structured to the point that at every point in time she is touching base with almost all our key clients in the diversity of sectors that we market for from smc from from sme to the corporate to copy banking to the startups to even individual clients she's visiting them and she's listening she's moved down from where she is and she's going there to listen to them to be with them to engage them to touch base with what they are thinking and what they want to do then when we come back as a bank we then look at the options available and how we can consistently reinvent because you see no big company can remain static the individuals the customers the businesses that we are targeting are not static they are constantly dynamic and changing and transforming and we have to do the same so staying in touch with your clients and customers very very important and you can do that across so many platforms and channels because of the digital age you know there are so many platforms staring out at us now to use and to engage them the other point is that you have to stay consistent as a brand when you say you are a continue to be a so that the customers will say this is who you are and that who you are should have a synergy with the original idea for which your brand was created if the two are at polar ends then there's a problem because one at one point the company believes they are here but on the in the, another breath the customers think that they are somewhere else that is a recipe for chaos you don't want that to happen to your brand pay attention to most importantly your internal customers your staff your colleagues your employees they are the first point of call when it comes to your brand they are your ambassadors who will take your good message out there if internally there is a disconnect between what you think you are and what your employees or colleagues think you are do you have a problem if your colleagues or your employees have the tendency to always be cynical where your brand is concerned that's a problem because you see they work for you they are they will be believable for me as a customer more than anything else because they work in, in in there that's why in silicon valley when most of the employees rose uh, up in arms to protest against some of the activities of their employees it became a big issue because employees were now reasserting themselves to speak against some of the practices that were deemed to be uncompromising in the world of today when it comes to tech very very important so pay attention to your internal customers listen to what they say engage them regularly create a structure 
where communication is seamless and fluid. Very, very important. Let your customers and let your employees have the connection and the commitment to always want to make their voices heard. Let them also feel like when they make their voices heard, their points are taken into consideration and something is done about it. That's very, very important. Now, branding never ends. The positioning battle, how you will continue to win in the marketplace, that's a process that never ends. So it's not a formula. You don't finish and say, oh, today, uh, branding activity and how we want to reach our customers, we have finished the journey, thank God. You don't finish. So long as you are in business to win, it's a continuous process. It's never ending because humanity is dynamic. And so must organizations be. That is how you are able to consistently evolve. It's in the art industry, in sports, in entertainment, everywhere. There is dynamism. Artists are constantly evolving with the times because they need to meet what the customers want and what the customers demand. And that is also one important point when it comes to the winning approach. Another point is any brand that continues to reflect a life of living in opacity will die. Brands must be transparent to customers. If there are issues, brands must acknowledge what the issues are, let the customers know, and most importantly, find ways of mitigating or solving the issues. It's very, very important. Brands must relate and be transparent. If you are a brand and you are opaque, we cannot break into you. We can't, you are not transparent with information and there's no clarity. That is a recipe for disaster because customers would truly leave and go elsewhere where they think they can be heard, where they can experience transparency. Bullying is out when it comes to the brand building process. Some big, big brands think that because they are too big to fail, they can bully customers, they can bully clients, they can be whoever they want to be because after all, I uh, have monopoly and you, uh, you, you will always be with me and you will always um, patronize what I'm, I'm doing and what I'm offering. That, that is a mistake. We should credit all customers and clients with some intelligence. I mean, I mean, I think sometimes we get this wrong. Some companies think, you know, customers will go with anything we do. After all, they need us more than we need them. That, that, that's, that's a mistake. Credit customers with intelligence. When you bully them, you'll be punished. Very, very important. Let us continue to also, as a brand, project with one single voice to all our stakeholders. What we say we are must reflect in what we do. Don't say, this is what I am, but don't do what I do. It has to be consistent across every facet of life because the positioning uh, uh, battle is really, for me, fundamental if you are to win in any marketplace under the sun. We must also show consistency. We must seek loyalty in our product offerings. We must not forget reputation. It's very important. Today, one single rant on social media and brands are running helter-skelter because of reputation. That is the power that consumers have now, where they can now make their own news, make their own videos, create their own engagement platforms, create their own sign-ups, where they ask other people to sign up <laughs> onto their idea of vilifying a particular brand because they didn't do something that they should have done. That is, for me, a powerful platform, and we need to get in there if we want to continuously win in this marketplace. So, constant reinvention. Brands must continue to find out how we can transform, how we can be dynamic. How can we meet the new age of customers? Today, APSA has a, an account called the Edition account, which is targeted at senior high school students. Our platform, the Science and Math Quiz that we sponsor today, is one of the most prolific and progressive platforms in this country when it comes to convergence of almost everybody in this country. Very important. Students are now showing interest in how they can have financial independence even before they get to the university. And so quickly, our Ignition account meets them at the particular point of their need. The requirements for the Ignition account is not like the requirements for me, a current account that maybe I would want. It is tailored measured so that it meets them at the point of their need. And in that way, APSA is also saying that we are empowering the next generation of our customers with financial knowledge and the yearning for financial independence and how they can also structure their minds when it comes to using and creating and transforming and engaging with money. Very, very important. So essentially, even before you get to the university, 
you have an idea of how you want to be financially independent through the Ignition account. And that, for me, is an example of a brand that is thinking about even the future and how to position itself to embrace the potential benefits of the future. So reinvention constantly is very important. Being versatile. Brands must be fluid and dynamic. Your processes, where there's a need for you to be very fluid and very dynamic, let your process reflect that. Let your process reflect that. Because you see, the world is changing. In the, in the, in the, in the thick of the pandemic, most companies were working from home. You should be able to make your, pro, your process and your structure and infrastructure very dynamic that it can accommodate people working from home. And you should be agile enough to quickly respond. That's very important. Brands must quickly respond. In this fast track age, response and how you do it is very, very important. And so that is essential if brands are to remain consistent with what they promise in the country. Now, I like to say that it is essentially all about people. All that I've said today about the positioning game, how we are winning, how brands can, can, can mature, how brands can be self-aware around them, how brands can listen and be sensitive and design what customers want and how they can meet them. It all goes to the point of people because it's all about people. People make history, as a great philosopher I know once said. Only the people make history. The people are the oil with which your brand would eat. The people speak for your brand. The people are the reason for which you are in business. It is all about people and connections. A brand must be able to connect properly. A brand must be able to reflect what the people want. Because you see, a brand is what a customer says it is, not what the brand says it is. If the customer says you are A, that is what you would be. And so it is a consistent journey of learning of refreshing, of uh, engagement. It's important that we have a human voice, that we speak like our customers, that we are able to respond, we're able to embrace feedback, we're able to transform and be dynamic for the sake of what we are in the business for. So it's a good discussion that we've had this morning about winning the positioning battle. It's, it's a discussion that will continue to go on and on because we cannot finish, we don't finish. We will continue but today i think i might have given you an insight into some of the things that you should you should take into consideration when you're a startup or you're a new business or you're a big organization or a conglomerate it never changes the idea that you should constantly be dynamic and transformative how many big companies didn't we know growing up who which have declined into absolute oblivion we can't even see them anymore how did they collapse? How did they fail? Did we ever think growing up that they were going to fail? Not a chance, but it happened. It means that when you bully your customers, when you try to take them for a ride, you'll be punished. A great man I know said that at some point in time, all power is tempted by the abuse of power. When you become too big, you are tempted to abuse the power you wield. That is when you have to watch out. Thank you very much for joining me this morning on the Business Connect series. Apps are does this all the time because we want to ensure that customers are able to connect with us. They are able to learn new things that are coming up in the business place, new trends, and they are able to empower their businesses for long-term success. And then we also benefit from that because we are essentially a platform that brings their possibilities to life. So thank you so much, and uh, we'll talk again. See you.